In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to make a classic text-based adventure game using JavaScript, HTML, and just a very little bit of CSS. And you will to, uh, be able to make a story where the user can interact with it and choose their own adventure as they go along. So in my case here, I have Welcome to Storytime with Kevin. I can give it a name. Let's have it Kevin. And we are introduced to the village of Cute Puppistan and the fact that it is being attacked by Avarice, the angry aardvark. And throughout the story, you can make choices. And sometimes it could be the correct choices. Sometimes they could, they could be the wrong choices. And if we choose the wrong choices, sometimes bad things happen. And you can include images. And if we navigate our way through the game, uh, you will end up with hopefully something good at the end. But the story can be entirely up to you. This will be very extensible and you can be able to create just about anything that your imagination can conjure up. And you can also see this is actually live on the internet. So at the end, uh, you will be introduced to how you can put your game or your story, however you want to refer to it, up on the internet. So the first thing I am going to do is that I am going to make a new folder. And I will call mine Story Time with Kevin. You can call it whatever you want, though. And for this, you're going to need a text editor. In my case, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you could use whatever you want. If you don't have a text editor, I recommend just Googling Visual Studio Code or VS Code. It will bring you to a website and you can figure out how to download it. It's very straightforward. But I have this and I am going to open up my folder in Visual Studio Code. And you can see I have my empty folder right here. Uh, with a uh, story time with Kevin. And the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to call it index.html. I'm not going to call it index.ht because that is not a real thing. So let me rename it index.html. And I'm going to get the basic structure set up for my game and then we're going to go through and make it interactive. So I'm going to have an HTML tag here. This is going to be the head and the head Anything that goes in between these two tags, the opening, notice it doesn't have that little forward slash. That one does. Anything that goes in here is part of the head. And the head is all kind of like the data that the website is going to need. Below the head, just like you, below your head, you have a body. And the body is where all the content that the user see is going to go. So I'm going to put a title. And then this title can be whatever you want. Uh, mine will be story time with Kevin, because that is the name of the sites. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to save that. And now if I open index.html in a browser, let me use Chrome here. Let's see where I put this, put my desktop index.html. And you can see I have the world's greatest website with the title story time with Kevin. However, we actually want some things to go inside of here, so let's do that. So like I said before, below the head comes the body. Body, and in here, we're gonna have a header, h1, and welcome to story time with Kevin. This will be the title. I save it. Hey, I actually have something in there. And this could be H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, not H7. Um, and it will give you various types of headers, the number one being the biggest, and then it goes down lower. All right, and now we are going to need a spot to put in the name. So let's have an input. And this is going to be of type text. So inputs come in all different types. But in this case, now we have a text input. Boom, we can do whatever we want. And we want a label for that. Label. And inside of that label, we want to say whatever question you want. What is your name? Cool. 
Oops. All right, and we want to make sure that this label goes to this input. So in order to do that, we need to give this input an ID. And we'll just call this name input. Notice I did not write ID there, that's why it's red. And to sync up the label with the ID, we need four equals and the exact same thing, name input. And you should get that autofill in whatever text editor you're using. That's really nice. Now, if we go here, story time with Kevin, what is your name? Cool. Now I could answer what my name is all day long, but I can't do anything about it because there's no button for me to click. Uh, so let me go here and I am going to add a button. And inside of that button, I will write, let's write something a little more descriptive, start the story. All right, now if I go back, refresh, cool. Um, but I don't really like that the button's up there. I think the button should be down below the input. That's that's what I want. And with HTML and CSS, you go to do whatever you darn well feel. So I'm gonna put that button down there. Now, how do we do that? The reason that the button is right next to the input is that they're both inline elements. And we want to make the button a block element so that it goes down to the next level. So I am going to need, need to make a new file. I will call this style.css. And for the button, when I am just going to display, not inline, like it was before, I'm going to switch it to black. And we could write all the CSS in the world here, but it's not gonna make a bit of difference unless we include it up here. So in the head, again, this is where all the kind of data goes when we include JavaScript later, this is also where we're gonna put it and all the presentation stuff is down here. So I want a link rel equals style sheet. And then href, that is the link to where that file is from. We, this auto fills it, but I am just going to have it be like that style.css. Cool. Now, if I go back here, sweet, I have that right there. And I don't really like that it's super close to it like that. So I think I'm also going to give it a margin too. So if I go here, I can actually, let's go here. So something I like to do is that if you go to inspect element, uh, okay, I just installed a new version of Mac OS. I forget which one. You can go to the elements, you can go inside of the body and you can see, hey, that's all the content I have right here. And if I click on that button, you can get that style and you can see the display block that I just wrote. If you uncheck it, it goes right there, huh, huh. But let's say I wanna add something else in there. You can play with all the sorts of different stuff. Let's say I wanna do the width at 400 pixels because I'm wild. Hey, there it is but I don't want that. Um, let's do margin top at 10 pixels. I like that, I think that's pretty good. Let's leave it at 15. And this is much better than kind of like continuously saving and going back and forth because this really allows you to get fine, ga uh, fine grain control in it. And something I do a lot of my CSS development like that. All right, so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna put it in there. And now I'm gonna do it when I refresh, it's the exact same thing. All right, so I'm gonna close out that welcome. It's kind of annoying. So we have basically the first part of what we want here, but when we click on this button, nothing happens. And that's where our good friend JavaScript is going to come into play. So I am going to make a script tag in the head. Script. And we are gonna have SRC for source. And again, just like we have before, we have style.css. Here, we are going to have main dot, not CSS, but JS. And we have a problem here in that this does not exist. We also have a problem where that's in a different line. All right, so I am going to make a new file. I'm going to call that main.js. Cool. And now we have our JavaScript file. Now, the first thing I like to do whenever I add a, another file is I like to make sure it actually exists. And I think the simplest way of doing that for JavaScript 
is just console.log. And this will log into the console. I am going to write, hey, the JavaScript file is here. Okay. Now if I do it, hey, the JavaScript file is here. So I know that that exists and any errors or anything that doesn't happen from now on is not because that I don't have a JavaScript file there. All right, so what I wanna do is that I wanna listen for when this button is clicked. And there's different ways of doing it, but I think the best way, or at least best option that we have here is I'm also gonna give this an ID. And I am going to, let's call this start button. And now, if I go back here, we are going to get the document. And now the document is in JavaScript, what's called an object. And an object just contains variables and functions and allows you to pick from that object in order to get whatever you want off it. So if I do a period right here, you can see, wow, these are a lot of things that are contained within that document. These are all options of different things that we can do. But what I wanna do is do a query selector. And a query selector allows you to go back into the HTML and allows you to pick out an element based on what you put in it. So for example, if I was to do label, it would go get that label and it would bring it back. Now we want the button and I could do button, but what if we have a site with like two buttons, then we're, then we're out of luck. So that's why it's nice to give it an ID. An ID should be totally unique to that element. So I'm gonna go here and to indicate that we want the ID attribute, I'm gonna do a little hashtag there and I am going to do button. It's kind of embarrassing that I already forgot what I called it. I also like to just kind of copy and paste a lot of these things because it definitely minifies, uh, minimizes errors. Boom, document.querySelector. And we could assign a variable var button equals document query selector. All right, so a variable uh, just, it contains some kind of value. So we are going to get this query selector and then we are going to get that value and put it into button. And then to make sure that we, to confirm that this is actually, we have that button, nothing has gone wrong. We are gonna console log button. Now let's see what happens when we go back and we refresh. Null, meaning it didn't get anything. Now, why the heck is that? That's weird. So when the JavaScript loads, it loads in and it immediately runs, hey, document the query selector. All right, cool. I'm gonna go look for all of that. However, all of this stuff has not been loaded yet. So even, uh, so this has not loaded and it's looking for it, thus the null. So we need to wait until it is loaded. And to make sure that it waits, we want to get our, well, we want to get the document object again. And this time we want to add an event listener. So event listeners will just wait for certain things to happen, certain kind of inputs, certain kind of events before they fire a function. So this add event listener, we want it to be dom content loaded. So once the dom content is loaded, it is gonna run a function. And a function is just simply a set of commands that could run when you choose. And it has those parentheses, open and curly brace. So once the DOM content is loaded, anything inside of here is gonna run. So I'm gonna put all of this stuff in here. Now, hopefully we have a little more luck. Hey, cool. So now we are getting the button from there. All right, and we want to, we don't uh, don't just want to print out the button, we actually want to do something with it. So just like we add an event listener here, I am going to add an event listener to the button. This previous one was called DOM content loaded. This one is going to be called click. And I'm going to have another function that runs when the thing is clicked. And I'm just going to console.log. Hey, the button was clicked. All right, now if I click the button, hey, the button was clicked and you can see it does it all of those times. Now, I want to actually get the value from inside of it. So in order to do that, 
I am going to get the input to so var input equals document that query selector and this one is called name input and we can get the input and just value so whatever is inside whatever the value is of that input it's going to console log Oops, helps to refresh once you make changes. There we go. Kevin, start the story. Cannot read property value of null. All right, so document query selector. I forgot my little pound sign. There we go. All right, start the story. Hey, Kevin is awesome. Hey, cool. Cool. So you can see whatever that you put into there, once you press the button, it will show up, which is, I think, pretty cool. So we've made some progress. We've done some things. But now let's actually get it so that once you click the button, the content of here changes. Now, what we want to do for that is we want to get another ID. But we want all of the content inside of this to change. So I'm going to make a div. I'm going to give it, call it ID content. And then I'm going to wrap all of this in a div. And then I'm going to indent the content inside of the div to make it look nice and pretty and be organized. So now once this happens, I want the, I also want to get the content. And if we do content, it's gonna be treated like an object and there's all these different functions that we could do once they are um, attached to the, uh, to the element but content. This one is going to be inner HTML and the inner HTML just allows you to basically set these, set this content to be whatever you want. So I'm gonna make this a string between two quotation marks or apostrophe. Uh, so in JavaScript, you can either do the single ones or the double ones, single, double, or as you'll see later, you could do these cool little back ticks as well, but we'll get to those later. So either single or double doesn't matter. Uh, content. And now let's have a new H1. So H1 equals chapter two. Cool. Let's try it. Hey, chapter two. And you can see we are starting to make our game interactive with many or with different chapters that we can now start to write. So let's make this a little bit more detailed. And I said that we have the back ticks. We're gonna start doing that right now. Cause something that's cool about the back ticks is where with these, if you wanna to go to like a new line, it just starts throwing errors. The back tick will allow you to go to new lines. Works well. Oops, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing here. There we go. All right. Boom. And to continue with this structure, I am going to have a paragraph tag right here. And then inside of that paragraph tag, I'm going to have my wonderful story. And I copied it off screen so that you don't need to watch me fumble through misspellings and bad grammar and writer's block and everything. And in this case, there's only one very special person who can save us. And that one very special person is whoever you decided to put in for that input. Now, the problem here is that if we just type input, like the JavaScript compiler has no idea that you want the variable input and not the word input. So there's a special uh, syntax that we could use between these backticks and only these backticks. This won't work with a normal string. And if you put it in like that, it knows that, oh, you want the variable input and not the word between this dollar sign, these, uh, this opening curly brace and this closing curly brace. So let's check this out and see if this works. What's your name? Kevin, start the story. Oh, what happened here? Did I forget to refresh again? That's embarrassing. Kevin. Hey, there we go. Okay. There's a problem here. And that problem is I didn't put value, huh? 
Let's try this again. That's why you test one step at a time so that you always know where your mistakes are. Hey, Kevin can save us. Awesome. And for a proper punctuation, let's put a period after that. Cool. All right. Now we want to have the inputs down here that allow us to choose which path we want to go down. And this is going to be different than the first type of input, which was a text input. These are going to be radio button inputs. And radio button may sound weird at first, but you've definitely seen them. So if I do input type radio equals radio, and let's just keep it like that. And let's have a label for it too. Label for radio one. And let's just have this be an ID equals radio one. Cool. Uh, da -da. Let's do that. Let's see what this looks like. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so my label is not there, but you can see the radio button is right there. And the label, that's because I did not write anything in the label, which tends to help. Label. All right, and what did I have for attack him? No, not that. Yes, I'm ready to accept is the first value. All right. Now let's go down here. I'm going to copy and paste this. And meh, I think I would rather go play video games instead will be the second option. Put that in there. Switch these around. So radio two, radio two. All right, let's see what this looks like. Yes, I am ready to accept. Meh, I think I'd rather play video games. Okay, so there's a whole lot wrong with this. First, the order's wrong. So that's really simple to fix. I want the radio button in front of the label, right there and right there. And the second problem is that they're in one line. And there's many different ways of fixing this, but I think the way that I will pursue it is just to put them in a div. So input and label, those are inline elements and they will go on one line. However, a div is a block level element and that will break to the next line whenever you, it sees a new div. So I'm gonna indent that. And there's one more problem with this, but let's test these first two issues first. Hey, cool. Now the other problem is that I could say, yes, I'm ready to accept. And meh, I think I'd rather just play video games instead. And that is impossible. You cannot do both of those things or else life would just be boring. So the reason that that happens is that we need to have a name for these inputs and these names need to be the same. So if we do name choices and name equals choices. Now, when the browser rendered these, it knows that these uh, both these radio buttons are uh, have the same name and that they're all part of the same group. So now when we do it, yes, I'm ready to accept. Maybe not, I will think I'll play video games instead. Yes, I could only choose one thing, cool. All right, and finally, we just want a button here. Go on. All right, and go on. I make a selection, and nothing happens. Now we had this problem before, and before we fixed it by just adding a listener onto this, and then I guess we could like keep on doing this ad nauseum and just do it and fill out the whole thing with like all these options and the. Uh, the problem is that that is going to get really, really complicated really quick. So we need to kind of take a step back here and think about what we can do in order to make this more repeatable and allow us to add as many pages as we want without just being overrun by complexity. And we are gonna do that by creating an object. We've used objects many times in this program from the document object here where it just has a bunch of functions and variables attached to it. And we are able to pull from that document object by 
using the little dot there and then saying what we want to do. So now instead of using the pre-built document one, we are going to create our own. So this is going to be a variable and I am going to call this variable story and it is going to equal opening brace and curly brace. And this is how we know that we want an object here. And I am going to have every scene is going to have a name to it. So these can be whatever you want, but this will be attack. And unlike up here where I have an equal sign to signify that I want an object inside of the object, we signify the key over here and the value by having a colon right there. And this um, attack is going to be another object and it's going to have several properties. The first is going to be the title. So the title, oops, colon, it's going to be inside a string. And we're just going to pull what we had down here, chapter two. Although I believe I, I made a mistake here and this should be chapter one because the first one you're just getting the name and so. And then each one of these keys and values is separated by a comma. I have a comma there. And now I'm going to have the actual story, colon, string. It's going to be inside of here. So this input value thing, uh, this is going to be a little trickier and we will come back to this. So we do not want that there for now. Okay, uh, this is going to be another one. We're going to have a comma and then we're going to have our choices. And the choices, see how these are a list? In JavaScript and many other programming languages, we can make a list by creating an array. And an array is just a list of whatever you want. It could be strings, numbers, or objects, which is what we're going to use in this case. And to start the array, I'm going to have an opening bracket and a closing bracket. And then inside of that, I'm going to have an object. And then these objects, just like this one, is going to have a key and a value. So let's see, let's call it choice. And then this is going to be this one right here. Yes, I am ready to accept. And then we are going to have another object and with another choice. And instead of being ready to accept in this instance, they were just going to play video games instead. Put that down there. Okay, now we have the first part of our object. And now just down here, I am going to pull these values off of my object by first getting that syntax that allows us to pull a variable from inside a string. It's going to be story dot attack dot title. And we'll follow that down. So, oh, a variable named story. Cool. It has a key name attack. And then inside of that, we have a title. And in here, I'm going to have oops, story dot attack dot story. All right, so let's check and see if this works. That, what's your name? Cool, just like before, that's what we want. You can even see the little change that we had here. Now let's try to change these inputs. And the inputs are gonna be a little bit more complex because we don't necessarily know how many choices we want or we're repeating the logic here. So instead of just changing this inside of it, I'm gonna create a whole new function for this. And this will be a function called get inputs. Oops, that's not the correct syntax. And inside this function, we are going to have a for loop. So a for loop is just a loop that allows us to iterate through something. So in this case, here, we'll have var i equals zero. And then while i is less than, let's say in this case, three, i plus plus, that means it will increase by one every time. And let's just console.log i here. So in this case, if I do get inputs, you can see zero, one, two. So iterated through each time. Now, let's see if we can finagle this a little bit to have it interact with our object up here. So this is story dot attack dot choices dot attack dot choices. And if we add that length to the end of this, this will get the length of that in array, which in this case is two, and then it will keep on going until it's less than two. So if I refresh this, same thing, it does, does it once, does it twice. Oh, one is less than two. Okay. I'm done with that loop. Now back here, 
we can go even further by pulling the values off of this. So each time I want to, whoops, I have to delete that console.log. I could do console.log story dot attack dot choices. And then if I do this little bracket, that is that signifies which element of the array that we want. And the array starts counting at zero. So this is choice zero. This is choice one, not choice one, choice two. Always start at zero in the arrays. Zero, one. It's a little confusing at first. So this will be zero, and we want to pull the property off of that. So this will be choices dot choice. Okay, so let's see if this works. Yes, I'm ready to accept. Cool. All right. Um, and then what we'll eventually do is have the I there so that it does the different ones. So yeah, so now we have both of those choices. All right, so now we are going to add all of this HTML logic to inside of that loop. We are going to create a variable called input, and that is going to be an empty string. And each time we iterate through this loop, we want to add to input. So that'll be input plus equals, because we are adding to whatever already exists inside of input. We don't want to replace it each time. We're going to have those back ticks and those copy and paste inside of here. And here we hard code, yes, I'm ready to accept. But in this case, we want to take story choice, put it inside of there, inside the dollar sign, open and brace, curly brace. And then that looks pretty good to me. And now let's switch the IDs around. So instead of hard coding one, we are going to just do I. So it'll be a different ID each time it iterates through the loop. I. Cool. We need to close that string right there. And finally, at the end of this, we want to return the input. So when you return something from a function, it just allows that function call to act as the value. So to kind of show that up here, I'm going to have this and we are going to call get inputs. Let me close the back tick there. All right. And get input, since we are returning the input here, that means that this get inputs, it will act as this value. If we did not return input here, this would just be undefined. We want to make sure that we return the input so that get inputs could act as that value. All right, now let's see if this actually works. Hey, cool. All right, it's amazing when things actually work the first time. That doesn't happen very often. All right, cool. Good job, everyone. Uh, all right, so now we are making a lot of progress here. One important thing is that we have kind of separated our content from our implementation. Uh, so that we can sort of like focus on our story up here and not have to worry about all the logic down here. Now, right now, we have hard-coded the current scene there. And we don't want that because we want this to be reusable. So we're going to add a property here. Above attack, we are going to have current scene. And the value for this current scene is going to be, ta-da, the current scene in string format. Now, if we were to go down here and replace this with current uh, current scene, we're going to have an issue, and that's that it's going to say story that current scene. Oh, I I got you. I know what that is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's this thing up here, current scene. It's a string called attack. Wait, but why the heck are you trying to do a property title on this string? Like, there's no property title on that, man. What are you talking about? So we need to do some special little syntax that allows us to get this value and look for it in here. And that special, very special syntax is having these little brackets around the value there. So now it says story current scene. Oh, whoa, you got these brackets? No way, man, good job. So it's current scene attack. Oh, let me look in this object for attack. Hey, here it is. And oh, this time, nice, man, you got a title. All right, it's there. So now it will do that. And we want to replace all of these attacks with whatever the current scene is. We go there, current scene, current scene, and current scene. And something is unhappy about something, and that is that there is no period here. 
All right, now let's see if this works. I'm gonna refresh that and everything should work as normal. Uncurrent scene is not defined. You don't say current scene is not defined. Oh, this needs to be story.currentScene. Story.currentScene. Story.currentScene, because we want it to be actually reference attack. Story.currentScene and story dot current scene all right whoops uh, all my applications are open there all right let's try this one more time hey cool all right we are ready to accept but we can't actually press any button that allows us to accept i am going to well first what i want to do is i want to i'm going to be like repeating this render scene but i only want this DOM content loaded one time in the beginning when I'm getting those initial values. So I'm going to create a separate function here. And this function will be called render. I spelled something wrong. Scene. Function render scene. Cool. And then we're going to put all of this. Where should I stop? Add listener. I'm going to take all of this, put it into here, and then this button dot add event to listener, instead of having a function, we are just going to list the function right there. So it's going to be render scene. Note I am doing this without any parentheses. We just want to pass the name of the function. We don't want to get the value. All right, I could delete that. And now after I do this, I am going to add a button. It needs to be inside of the back ticks. And that button ID will be submits button. And I will just have next. Okay, I'm gonna save this if all goes well. I should have the exact same thing, except with a button at the very end. So let's refresh this. That syntax error, I don't like that. Unexpected end of input. So I made some kind of syntax error here. It is around that return input. Let's try further up here. No, no, it's probably even further up here. I don't have any closing bracket there still doesn't like it what's wrong with that oh and I also need this all right cool let's try this again all right start the story and nice I have a button cool now let's get this button to actually do something because right now it doesn't right after I add that button I am going to do my document dot query selector and there'll be hashtag submit button And we'll have var button equals document that. And then button, we want to add an event listener just like we did before. So we added up here. We want to do the same exact thing down here. And this will be for a click. And then if the user clicks it, for now, we're just going to console that log. You clicked, good job. All right, let's see if this works. Missing parenthesis after the argument. You need a comma to separate those two. All right, next, and you clicked, you clicked, you clicked, you clicked, good job, okay. Let's do something a little more useful than telling the user what they already know. So I want to figure out which one of the values was clicked. And in order to do this, I am going to get, because there's going to be a little bit of complexity in this, I am going to get another function. And actually, this, should, this one should really be get inputs, not the other one. Actually, I'll call this get input value, so we don't have to change anything. So this will be get input value. And once the button is clicked, we are going to call that function. Now that function 
is going to use a new query selector here. So we're going to use this document object. And then it, um, instead of just stopping at query selector, we're going to have query selector all. And the difference between query selector and query selector all is that query selector all will get all of the elements that meet that certain, uh, that certain condition, and then it will return them in the form of an array. So we want everything that is an input. And we only want a certain type. So input type equals radio. Have to make that different, there we go. We gotta make sure this type and this type are different. This could be double and this could be single, or this could be single and this could be double. They just can't be the same. And basically this says, find an input and make sure that it has an attribute of type that is radio. And we'll go back here and we can call this inputs equals, and now we are gonna iterate over those inputs just like we did down here with a for loop. So I'm gonna have for var i equals zero. And then while i is less than the length of inputs, we are going to increase i by one. So this will iterate through all of the inputs. And I want to pull the value and find out whether or not it is checked. So if inputs, remember we're referencing an array, so we need to use, use this bracket syntax right here, and we're gonna get the i1 that we have. Oops, inputs.i, if that is dot checked. Then for now, we are just going to console.log that input, input i. All right, so we are gonna iterate, we're gonna find every input that is of type radio, and then we are gonna iterate through those inputs, and then we are going to check each individual one and see if it is checked. And then if it is, hopefully, we will say we may be able to actually print something out here. Okay, yes, next, input is not defined. Inputs, inputs, inputs. You need those plurals. All right, cool. We have our input. Awesome. Now, what we want to do, so now we're going to start to move towards actually getting our new scenes here. We want to go up here and we want to add a new property to this choices array of objects. We want to have a destination. So this destination is going to be whenever you click on this choice, it's the next scene that you want it to go to. So you're gonna to have to come up with a name for each one of these. In this case, I am going to call my next scene, I'm going to call that battle. And this one is just going to be called destination. This one is going to be called go home. But these will be descriptive of whatever the next scene in your story is. All right, so down here, when we're iterating through, this is, again, I'm down here in get inputs where we're actually setting those. We wanna add a new attribute to the input that we could then pull off once we're up here and find that destination. And within, um, with an HTML element, if you add an attribute with the prefix of data in front of it, you can make up what? Ever you want. So we can call this anything that we wanted and then we'd be able to pull that attribute off when it gets selected. So I'm gonna call this data destination and it is going to equal, this is gonna be a mouthful. It is going to equal, well, first I'm gonna get this little dollar sign, story.currentscene.choices. So that array of choices that's in the current scene, I'm gonna copy and paste that into there. And then we want to get the current element that is being selected. So we have I, it's iterating through. We want to get the I element of that. And then this is an array of objects. So it is going to have a property that we need to reference, which in this case is destination. Okay, so this is, take a good hard look at that. And hopefully I got it right, because if you took a good hard look at it and I got it wrong, that would be embarrassing, but... That's a weird, long, crazy syntax. Um, so let's try this out and see if it works. All right. My name. Yes, I'm ready to accept. 
All right, data destination battle. Cool, that is on there. That makes sense, nice. All right, now let's go back here and we are going to pull this value off of it. So inputs.i, unlike up here where we're able to just add a dot notation to get checked, here we need to use a method that's on inputs and this is going to be get attribute. So we gotta use a separate method, but this makes sense. I think get attribute, I'm getting the attribute from an element. That's, that's not so hard. And we are going to have it be inputs, uh, da, 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 what? Inputs I, no, that's not right. <laughs> don't, don't listen to that. Get attribute, much simpler than that. It is data destination, because that is the name of the attribute on that element. Uh, on that element. Destination, all right. I think that is spelled right. Let's try this out. Hey, cool. Hey, battle, go home. Awesome, cool. Now, in order to make this go to the next scene, we actually have to like add the next scene. So and do that. I have this copied and pasted again to avoid um, having you watch me fumble through writing stuff. So this one, that one is battle. All right, let me write that. And this will be a comma after attack. Make sure that is right. That will easily trip you up. Battle, that is right there. And the other one was the video game one. Where did I have that go home? All right. That's right there. Cool. So each one of these and most text editors, you can kind of close it to kind of check like that. So I know that because it's closed like that, I have attack, the object, comma, battle, the object, comma, go home, the object, battle, comma. Blah, 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 blah. Except for one change that I made when I was recording the video versus the one where I did it before, and that is this destination. No, this choice I originally had as value. So I need to switch those over. This should all be choice. I think I was mentioning this one doesn't have it. We'll get into that later, but... All right, um, so now down here, I actually wanna make it go to the next destination. Instead of console.logging the destination, I am going to pull that off and I am going to set the current scene to the destination. So we have story.currentScene and it's gonna equal the data destination. And then since we have already separated out render scene into its own function, I can call render scene from here and because it is a separate, um, uh, because it is a separate function, it could run through it, and then since this current scene has changed, it's going to have all new data for it to render. There, and nice. The epic battle for a cute pup is standing, and I can attack him with a sword or attack him with a candlestick. All right, perfect. All right, so we have like the structure for a story, the structure for a game, a quiz, whatever. Um, you could stop right now and make everything that you wanted to. However, there's a couple more details that I wanna to add to this. I want to add images. I wanna actually put this up on the web and I want to be able to, I don't wanna always have to have options. Like once it's over, maybe I just wanted to go to like the beginning or something like that, or just something where we don't need choices here. Um, I am going to go back and you can see I kind of set this up here. If, if you look, there's no choices. So we need to be able to handle that down here. And I am going to have at the end of this. So first of all, if this is done, if it renders a scene, I don't want to do anything down here. I want to exit this function. And we could do that by just calling return. This will exit the function and not do anything else after it. And down here, I want to set the story dot current scene to the story, whatever the current scene is. So story dot current scene and the default destination. After that is set, I just want to render it all over again. So I want to render um, render scene. All right, go and down here, 
if we were to try to do this, it would just fail because it would be looking for all these inputs, but it wouldn't be there. So I want to check if story, if this down here, if this element that we're basing everything off of, if it doesn't exist. So in order to check for that, I can just put a little exclamation point in front of it. And that means not. And it's going to check, is this like an actual value? Is it something? And then if it's not, then whatever is here um, in here will happen. Whatever is inside of here will happen. And instead of returning this whole long string of an input, I just want to return an empty string. So instead of it being all here, it'll just be an empty string. So now hopefully um, if we do go home, this should work. Let's try it. Man, I think I'd rather play video games instead. Hey, all right. And I think this even works too. Yeah, all right, cool. So you could see I had my default destination down here. Default destination, it was attack. If I had switched that to battle or whatever, it would go back to battle. And it allows you to do that. Uh, so now we're really getting there. I also had this button text. Um, I don't know if I actually even had that in the demo game, but what the heck, let's throw that in there really quick. So I have, where is that? Where's my button? It's going to be a little late for me here. All right, button next right there. So in render scene, we are going to have text, var text equals next, it needs to be a string. And then if story, dot or story dot current scene we've done this one a bunch of times now if that has a value called button text we want to set it to button text i got lost again oh no that's oh, up here all right story yep there we go then we just want to set text not test text equals story dot button text. All right, and down here, instead of writing next, do our variable and just call it text instead. All right, let's try this one more time. Uh, meh. Hey, all right, nice. Um, cool. So that is one thing off the list. I think the last thing that we need is just some images and then put it up on the web. So, so to make the images, I used a free online tool called Klecky. I think this is how it's called. It's just like a really simple paint tool. Um, you, you could use whatever you want though. Uh, you could Photoshop or paint or scratch and take a screenshot. I don't know, whatever you want to do. And something that I'm uh, definitely positive about is that you don't want to watch me uh, struggle and make really bad images for the next like hour and a half. So I am going to spare you that and I am just going to use the ones that I already created, but you could very easily create them here and then save it. Now, what I'm going to do is back here, I want to make a new folder in here that I'm going to put all of my images in. So it's going to be called IMG. And then I have in this, I have all my images that I already made. So when you have them, you can put your own in there. And then I am gonna take it and then paste them inside of it. That's not how you paste things, is it? All right, uh, let's see if I can drag it in there. However you happen to do that. And now if I look in here, I have a bunch of images inside of my folder that I can use. And the properties on these are going to be whatever your image is called. You could have image and then get the name of the image. I made it and we will go over this so that you don't need to put the little folder, just the name of the image. So video game.png, video game.png down here. Now let's get this in. Getting these images in is actually a little tricky. Um, I was actually not totally aware of how to do this. So um, I had to do a little, I do a little research on this, uh, but once you follow along, it's not too bad. So we need to create a new element and we're going to have, we'll just call that image var image equals for now, it's just going to be an empty string. And then if story that story that current scene 
hello my old friends if dot image so if that exists we're checking for that first then we want to set image to a new string it's going to be an html string like this called img short for image close that tag and we are down here we're just going to leave this alone like this and then down here after everything's all said and done we are going to check once again if there is an image and then if there is an image we are going to document dot query selector and we're just going to look for the image we are going to assume that this is the only image in this on the page at the time if for some reason it was not you could add um, an id in there and search for the id instead um, and instead of sending this document query selector to a variable i'm just going to pull the properties directly off the end there and we are going to set the source of that image and then now that is going to equal img slash and let's have the little back ticks here keep things consistent oops and then now it is going to be the name of the image so we can't set the source up here that's what kind of confused me i didn't realize that you can't set the source up here you need to just set the element and then after that you could set the source on it after it's all set and it's in the it's in the html it's in the dom all right, so let's see if this works. All right, see. This is not going to work because I did not put the image in. So we also need to actually set it. So we kind of like created this element and we changed the property of it here. We never actually put it in the HTML anywhere. So let me, that is going to be right there, image. Cool, so if there is an actual image, it'll be the image tag. If there's not, it'll just be an empty string and won't do anything. Hmm. Is this a, cannot press set property source of null. And that is because there is no such thing as an image tag, IMG. Hey, all right. Uh, so we have my image. Uh, it's just a little bit too big. So I'm going to do what I did before, and I'm going to change the property on it by inspecting the element. I'm going to find that image. And for this, all we need to do is set a width, and the rest of um, everything else will be taken care of. So let's see what I have. 300 pixels. That's pretty good. We could probably bring that up a little bit. 400 pixels. 500 pixels. Your choice. Not 50 pixels. Don't do that. That's not your choice. All right, so we are just going to set that in the CSS. So down here, image, that'll be a width of 500 pixels. All right, now we have our story. We have an image, we have text, we have a lot of stuff here. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention that we did not add in, that I totally just slipped my mind, is that we never actually set the name here. We asked for the name in the beginning, but we don't actually set it anywhere. So now let's take care of that. So this is gonna be a little funky, but bear with me. We, instead of just setting a variable here, we are going to use a function in order to set properties inside of this. So a function, if I have a function called getStory, What I can do is that I can return this object. So basically, it's just like having the variable that was the object, but now we are returning it instead. And the benefit of that is I could pass an argument into this, and then down here, I need to switch this to backticks. I could put my name. Okay, so we have a function called getStory, and this function just returns this gigantic object. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to the variable story. So instead of setting it init this variable initially to the object, we are gonna wait until we get the data that we need, 
and then we are going to set this variable with all of that uh, data that has been set. Now down here, did I forget something here? Yes. So this is the object. I need another one down there. And to make it look a little better, actually that does look good, I just need to indent. No, I need to indent more. Ah, this should be indented here. Cool, like that, like that. Always try to like indent and do things properly like that because it makes it a lot easier to debug later. And I hope I don't make a mistake after I mention that because that would be awkward. Okay, and just like one of the very first things we did, I am going to try to pull the value off of this input. And first what I wanna do, so button an event listener, after this button is clicked, that's when I wanna get everything. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna make a function here. And we're gonna take a function to run after uh, we have clicked on the button. So I'm gonna take this because we don't want this input like when the DOM's loaded, that's that's no good for us. I'm gonna take this var input, let's call this name because we already have a bunch of things already called input now. And we want story to, e uh, to equal get story with name as the argument that is passed. So once it's clicked, we are going to create a new object with all of this stuff in here. Let's see if this works here. All right, what is your name? My name is Kevin Man. Huh, I don't like that. What happened here? Mm -hmm. And it helps if you take out a function such as render scene, it helps to put it back in. Um, I also need to pull the value off of name or else It'll just be an object, we don't want that. All right, let's try this, see if it works. Kevin, start story. There's only one person who can save us and that one incredible person is Kevin, awesome. All right, so we have our story, we have our game, whatever you wanna call it, our text-based adventure. It is done except for all the content that you wanna put in there. And now since I've said this before, but since you separated, the content from all the implementation. You can feel free to just worry about your text-based adventure and writing it inside of here. And then from here, you could do whatever you want. So really great job getting this far. Now there's only one more thing that we need to do. You could have the greatest, most amazing story in the world, but if there's nowhere then to read it, then what kind of fun is that? You want all the fame and glory that comes along with being a great author, right? So let's go here and let's publish this guy. I am going to do this on github.com. So if you just search for GitHub, fortunately I am leaving the site and my smiley face behind. And GitHub is a um, great site for version control. Um, if you spend any time programming, you will eventually come across it. So it is worth creating an account. Um, if you do not have an account, create one. If you have one, log in. And if you've done this a million times, you're like, Kevin, I know what I'm doing. Uh, so we have a, I wanna make a new repository with that green button. And this repository name is just going to be the name of your story. And this will be text-based adventure video. And I'm gonna make it public. You can have a description if you want. Um, for the way that we're gonna do this, it's important that you add a readme file uh, because we just wanna do this through the GUI. So uh, it gets more difficult to do it through the GUI if you do not add the readme file. So once that is done, I'm going to create a repository. Okay. Now from there, I just wanna add files into it. I wanna upload some files. And this is in my, this is in the desktop, isn't it? All right, story time with Kevin. Now this is important. You need to have the index.html. That needs to be like at the root of the file. You can't just throw in this whole folder or it won't work. Okay, you need to kind of go inside of it and then get all of them like that. 
And if I remember uh, doing it like this, we might have issues. So what I'm gonna do instead of that is I'm gonna drag and drop it from Finder or whatever you happen to use. So get your folder, open it. Don't drag the whole folder in like I just mentioned. Like that, get all of those and drag it in. Boom, 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 it will upload. All right, and you have all of those. And I wanna commit my changes. It's processing my files. And apparently this may take a few minutes to complete. Oh, not even, all right, cool. All right, so now we have this. And in addition to like being able to publish our website, it's also cool that you just have a copy of this online. Um, you can go into my GitHub and see like a bunch of code that I've written and everything. It's just a really cool site and a really good way to communicate. And I'm gonna go to settings. And where is this? I always forget this. We want to make this a site, GitHub pages, that's what we want. Where'd that go? GitHub pages, all right. And GitHub pages is currently disabled. Select the source, all right, we can go here. Call it main now, all right. So you wanna to go to main um, and root and then save. And it is saved. Go down here. Your site is ready to be published. Uh, so this might take a couple minutes. So give it a few. And instead of like, I think this turns green once it actually goes there. Okay, it has turned green for me. That's what it'll look like. And my site is published. And hey, story time with Kevin. My story is all over the internet and anyone can access it by just giving them this URL. So great job finishing this. I know it was long. I know it was kind of, it was more, uh, it ended up being more than I initially thought it would when I first uh, started thinking about making this video, uh, but great job finishing it. If you wanted to, um, th there's a ton of styling stuff you can do with CSS if you wanna do that. Uh, but I think with this structure, with this format, uh, you can make just about anything you want. So again, if you made it this far, if you're still listening, thank you. Great job. And until next time, I'll see you later.